Sinestra. Hello there, with this video I'm going to continue to celebrate the harmony between the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, since we now live in a day and age where both can be played and appreciated. So here's another batch of games that appeared on both systems but are decidedly better on the Genesis for one reason or another. And again I want to point out that I'm not including stuff like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Aladdin, or Earthworm Jim for the reason that they're very good games on both systems. If you pick to play one on one system or another, you can't go wrong with either. First I want to start with Cool Spot. I did a standalone video on this one a couple years ago, and I even ended it by saying you're better off playing this one on Genesis, but I got so caught up in the other games that I completely forgot a few obvious ones that I'd already pointed out myself in the past, like Cool Spot. Yeah, this is actually a pretty decent game, believe it or not, but it's much better on the Genesis for two reasons. First, the Genesis version has a better resolution resulting in a slightly zoomed out view screen, meaning your Cool Spot sprite is a bit smaller, and you can see a lot more of the level. Second, the soundtrack just sounds really freaking cool on Sega. Check this out. So yeah, Cool Spot may be shameless product placement, but it's actually not that bad of a platformer, especially on Genesis. Next is James Pond 2, which received a Super Nintendo port titled Super James Pond. This series originated on the Genesis, so it might seem obvious that the Sega version is better, but that's not always the case since a game like Sparkster is on the same level of quality as a game like Rocket Knight Adventures 2. But James Pond is no contest. Take one look at Super James Pond and one thing stands out. This game is ugly. Also, the controls are weirdly slippery. The feel of this game is just all wrong. James Pond 2 on Genesis, meanwhile, is... Okay, it's still kinda ugly, but Sega's muted color palette is actually beneficial in this case, and the controls are so much smoother, it actually plays kind of a bit like Kid Chameleon. But yeah, ignore Super James Pond and play James Pond 2 instead. Another easy one to point out is the Strike series. Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, and Urban Strike. Again, all three of these games were originally made for the Genesis and received ports for the SNES later on. And again, like most other games of this nature, Sega just has the hardware that lends itself better to this style. Everything is faster and more intense. And I don't just mean you cover more ground faster, I mean in spots like this on the Super Nintendo versions, where there's this annoyingly long pause every time you flip back to the map. That really gets old after a while. These games aren't bad on the SNES, they're still okay, but if you're interested in the old Strike series and want to make stuff go boom flying around in an AH-64 Apache helicopter, you're better off playing them on Sega. In a similar vein, there's also Mickey Mania. No, unfortunately, you do not make stuff go boom in this game, although that'd be pretty damn cool, but the difference is very stark in just how each game respects the player's time. Same as the Strike series, the loading time for the Super Nintendo game is kind of ridiculous. I mean, this is a cartridge game, right? Not a CD? Also, the Genesis version just feels livelier. The SNES version feels more deliberate, like Mickey is walking through a swamp or something. The Genesis version also has a wider resolution. Both games look great, of course, but I'd much rather play the Genesis version Next, there's Captain America and the Avengers, and this game might represent the biggest gap in quality between how much better the Genesis version is and how awful the SNES game is to play. Sure, the Super Nintendo game has a great looking story presentation, but it is one of the cheapest and most difficult beat em ups you'll ever play. You regularly get trapped by enemies and get stuck in a damage loop, and the controls seriously almost feel broken. The Genesis version at least manages to be a decent enough beat em up, and an especially good game if you like the Avengers universe, since it's represented well here, from the sprite work to the colors to the story. This is an easy one. Avoid the hell out of the SNES game, but check out the Sega Avengers game instead. Flashback is a cinematic platformer that was developed by game designer Paul Cuisset with the Genesis in mind, although it came out for like a dozen other platforms at around the same time. The Super Nintendo also got a port a year after the Genesis, and at first glance, yeah, that game looks good enough, but this is one of those you gotta play for yourself. Cinematic platformers can be hard to judge because they play so differently than other games. You have to be purposefully methodical and deliberate, dodge first, then fire, all while being very careful. Sega did a better job with this one in my opinion. The SNES port has some trouble with lag and slow down in places, and the balance of speed between your character and enemies just feels off-kilter. After you play both versions, it's easy to see Flashback was developed for the Genesis. Last, I'll finish with the FIFA series. In the previous video, I pointed out EA's, NHL, and Madden games when I really should have said just all of their sports games, including NBA Live and especially FIFA. On the Super Nintendo, the FIFA games don't hold a candle to stuff like Sensible Soccer, International Superstar Soccer, or even Super Soccer, but on Genesis, the FIFA games have a better frame rate and play much smoother as a result, so they hold up pretty well today alongside those other games I listed. I think the quote-unquote Genesis has better sports games talking point is mostly BS, but in the case of EA Sports, 
its games, it's absolutely the case. And FIFA is definitely better on Genesis. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.